Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk about iOS 17 and why the software sucks, according to a lot of you guys, and this year has been very different. Now, I've been covering iOS updates forever now, for a lot of years here on YouTube, and this year, I have to say, it's been a little bit different. Half of you guys say that iOS 17 is a great software update, and half of you guys say that it is not as good, it sucks, it is a software that lacks features, lacks performance. It's been nearly a week since iOS 17 Beta 1 has been out and I wanted to share with you guys why you guys believe that iOS 17 sucks. I did go into YouTube and ask you guys, tell me what are some of the features you were hoping to see within iOS 17 and boy you guys had a lot to say. A lot of the features and shortcomings in regards to iOS 17 were mentioned here. So if you want to see the entire post, I'll link it in the description down below. It is available on my YouTube community page where a lot of you guys express your thoughts on some of the features that Apple could have added to the software that are just simply not here. A lot of changes that you were hoping for and things like that but as I mentioned in the future a lot of this stuff could change but let's go ahead and dive right into this video now as always if you would like to stay up to date with the latest iOS news and Apple software updates of course don't forget to subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications so that you don't miss another episode okay so first I want to talk about a dynamic island I thought it was a bit weird that Apple never mentioned dynamic island no update was provided for the actual feature and this is a headline feature for pro devices right so we were hoping for Apple to add basic things maybe like notifications maybe even Siri right Right now, of course, we can go into our music, just throw our music into Dynamic Island. We can long press in order to control our music. Wouldn't it be really nice if you get a notification like messages or maybe email and you can long press on the notification and just simply quick reply and then send it right back. It would be really cool to use Dynamic Island for notifications. And a lot of you guys have just mentioned that Apple never mentioned notifications or anything in regards to Dynamic Island, which in my opinion is sort of interesting as well. It is again, one of the headlining features and one of the coolest features, honestly, on the iPhone 14 Pro models and Apple never mentioned it. No update was provided, hopefully, maybe, in the future, we'll see updates to Dynamic Island in order to us get things like maybe even Siri, right? Because right now, Siri, one thing is that Siri just remained basically the same. This year, Apple simply removed the hey from the assistant's name. That was it. That's the only thing we got for Siri this year. We didn't get any AI integration, which I'm kind of bummed out about. But Siri can also lie within Dynamic Island. So when you invoke Siri within iOS, if you have a Dynamic Island device, it would be nice to long press and Siri just pops up here on Dynamic Island instead of in the middle of the screen to the bottom middle of the screen here being sort of interrupting the operating system experience in my opinion i always thought it was kind of weird and i've always thought it was weird how apple handles siri it just pops out of nowhere in the middle bottom portion of your screen with dynamic island this is the perfect opportunity to just have it dynamically appear on dynamic island it would be a facelift a refresh to the operating system and siri for the iphone i think it's a great idea for apple to use dynamic Dynamic Island for a lot of things. Again, Siri, notifications, quick reply, and things like that. Now, don't get me wrong, Dynamic Island is a great feature, but I think Apple definitely needs to continue working on it in order to make it a lot better. So yeah, that's one of the reasons you guys believe that iOS 17 sucks, and I have to agree with this one. Now, this next one comes as no surprise, customization. Now, it is obvious that a lot of iPhone users love to customize the icons and the interface of their iPhones, but Apple did not deliver this year. A lot of you guys we're hoping at least for an icon refresh, something new, maybe add dimension to the icons. Now, a lot of you guys do like this flat looking design, but a lot of you guys feel like it's dated, like it's old, like it's outdated, and would like a refresh or the ability to customize your icons and change them to whatever it is that you want. And I have to agree, I come from a jailbreak background. My videos used to be all about jailbreaking, customizing the operating system, changing the icons around and doing a lot of theming. So I do love theming my iPhone. So I guess a theme store would have been a great idea for iOS 17 where designers can design and developers can develop a lot of the themes and customizations for the iPhone. This is another stream of revenue that Apple can open up, a different store for the iPhone, and I think it would be a great hit. But a lot of you guys were hoping for this one, and of course, it hasn't happened just yet. And now, another feature that you guys always ask about is split-screen multitasking. Now, I don't specifically want this feature on my iPhone, but it looks like a lot of you guys do. So 
the ability to use two applications at the same time. Now, Apple has some sort of split screen multitasking here for your iPhone. So if you're in messages, you can use the camera to insert text and things like that. But it's not real multitasking. It's just selected applications that can use the camera to input text. But yeah, this is another one that you guys were hoping for that Apple did not deliver. Now, before we continue, I wanted to share a quick word from our sponsors, K-School and the K-School Magic Stand case. I know I talked about this case several times here on the channel. You might have seen these cases laying around the studio. It is my go-to case, the Magic Stand. It is sturdy. It is magnetic. It allows you to use your MagSafe accessories. You can prop it up for FaceTime calls. You can prop it over to the side here to watch movies and TV shows or maybe even YouTube videos. I use it to carry my iPhone as well and take pictures as well. And of course, it protects the camera. It protects the front of the display and it's a well-built quality with multiple colors available so make sure to check out k-school and the k-school magic stand case with all the special offers links will be in the description down below and then of course we also want to talk about the lock screen now i have to say one of my favorite features in ios 17 has got to be the lock screen with the new standby feature which i'll be talking about on a separate video but you guys were hoping for customization and additional functionality so for example a lot of you guys and i think this is the number one request the ability to change these shortcuts on the bottom of the screen they still remain the flash they still remain the camera we still have the same swipe to the right for the camera press here for the camera which is redundant in my opinion the same basically functionality on the same section of the os which in my opinion needs to be addressed apple so yeah no ability to customize the shortcuts on face id devices for the lock screen which is a bummer now keep in mind that apple added some changes like standby mode which i love they also had the ability to change the width of the font and things like that but a lot of users wanted the ability to be able to delete a lot of these cards at once or organize these uh, lock screen setups at once. Now, remember the rumored feature that we were hoping to get this grid view right here? This would have been a great idea in order to be able to delete your cards or setups from the lock screen. It would be great because right now you have to swipe up, delete, and if you have another one, if you have like 20, then you have to swipe up, delete, and keep doing this and so forth, and it just kind of gets annoying swiping up and deleting. A grid view would make a ton of sense within iOS 17 in order to just delete these setups and organize it the way you want it and there you guys have it just something that apple did not deliver on now there was also a rumor that you will be able to share your setups this did not happen in ios 17 at least it hasn't happened just yet where you can go ahead and long press and maybe share your lock screen setup with someone else we don't have that feature here just yet at least in beta one but yeah users wanted the ability to further customize and maybe add some changes to the lock screen that apple just did not add this year within ios 17 at least not yet now the next thing i want to talk about is control center now i don't believe control center is necessarily broken but a refresh a facelift would have been nice right the ability to maybe even customize these tiles to your liking would have been nice apple has added some minor tweaks when you airplay something and some minor ui changes but aside from that everything basically remains the same we have a new toggle to ping apple watch in case you ever lose it which is very useful but in terms of uh you know customization and functionality it remains basically the same nothing has really changed here with control center now something else that apple really needs to address is airpods firmware update now the way you update your airpods is just weird within ios you just have to let them sit next to each other that ping just came in so yeah the airpods sit next to your iphone while they're paired they're both connected to a power source and then you just have to wait for them to update automatically in the background i guess that's okay but a lot of users just want a physical button to check for software updates just like we do on our iphone so go into software update on your airpods panel right here and check for any firmware update available for your airpods it's just something that apple just really needs to add at this point because airpods is just very popular a lot of users do have them and a lot of users do want this feature including myself now another feature that i was really hoping to see this year and hopefully it will come later down the road is the ability to lock individual applications using face id we did not get that feature at least not yet and i was hoping to see this because if there's any issues within the operating system and you have a second layer of security that's always a great thing remember this year it was earlier reported that if someone was to take your iphone or knows your passcode they can actually change your apple id password and you'll be locked out of your iphone if you have a second layer of security by 
requesting Face ID, for example, before you open the FaceTime application or the settings application, rather, then yeah, you'll be further protected from things like this, right? Someone just grabs your phone while it's unlocked and they try to launch the settings app. If they get prompted with Face ID, guess what? They can't go change their settings. So yeah, Apple should probably think about this and Apple, if anyone from Apple is ever watching my videos, this is definitely something that I think you guys should really consider adding to the operating system. Yeah, I was hoping for Face ID locking of applications and even Touch ID, of course. Now let's talk about the number one request for iOS 17. Now the number one most requested feature for iOS 17 by you guys was side loading or third party app stores, the ability to install apps from somewhere other than the app store. Now Apple has time still to comply with EU regulations. I think they have until 2024. So this feature could still be coming to the iPhone within iOS 17, maybe 17.2, 17.3 later down the road. But a lot of the very reliable sources have indicated that Apple is definitely working on side loading for iOS 17 and of course they're going to wait to the very last minute in order to make this feature available and it could only be available on regions where Apple is required by law to allow this on the iPhone because Apple says that the App Store is their safe zone, right? Where Apple users can download apps, be protected, privacy and security is in mind. So the App Store is the reason why Apple does not allow third-party app stores or side loading. However, I'm in the 50-50 on this one because this could be obviously a great thing, but it also could be a very, very bad thing because malware is out there, of course, spyware is out there, and apps can definitely take control of your device if you install from a source that you're not very familiar with and don't know what they're doing in the back background things could go wrong but a lot of users want this this has got to be the number one request side loading or third-party app stores the ability to install apps on your iPhones from anywhere on the internet is one of the most popular requests from iPhone users now let me know if you agree with a lot of these things what do you think about iOS 17 so far thank you for watching guys I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys on the next one peace